Welcome back to Rick Scale Model Fix and part 3 of the Hobby 2000 stroke Hasegawa P40N Warhawk video build. As we ended part 2 we were waiting for the decals so that we could crack on and get the upper scheme painted on the kit and I'm pleased to announce that they've now arrived. We have amassed quite a few parts and sub-assemblies all sat there on the bench and they're tedious and time consuming jobs but at least they're now done and we can crack on and get this build completed. So the decal sheet arrived as mentioned previously and it's Extra Decal X48149 and it's titled Fighters Over Africa and the Mediterranean Part 1 and as you can see that's the P40 scheme that we're going to be completing on our model. So there's a few things to just watch on the decal sheet, some of these airframes, or certainly the Kitty Hawk is labelled incorrectly I believe, saying it's from 450 Squadron when it should be 3 Squadron, but nonetheless they're the markings that we're going to apply to our kit. So it's dark green, dark earth and sky grey. There's a number of other options on the kit, there's a couple of Hurricanes, Spitfire and Mustang, and various schemes. The decals themselves look to be well printed as normal for extra decal, proudly saying that printed by Microscale, so should work well with Microsol and Microset decal solutions. So let's make a start on the camel. So the first thing I've done is nip downstairs to the printer and we've enlarged the painting diagrams to scale and these will be used to make some paper templates for the camo pattern and we'll just work in sections probably start with the port wing and sort of work progressively round the kit and then we're not handling freshly painted paintwork well painting is now well underway with our P40 and we've started with dark earth and dark green this has all been sprayed freehand and then we've come in and broke up the colours with other manufacturers colours of the same type and finally we've just started adding some depth to those panel lines with some Tamiya gloss smoke and then it's had a coat of guns varnish over the top so we started off with base layer of RAF Dark Earth and RAF Dark Green from Extra Colour. That was allowed to dry thoroughly. Then we started breaking up the Dark Green with some MRP Dark Green, MRP 110. And then finally we broke out these AK Real Colours. These don't look right to use in my mind for the whole of the camouflage but they were really good at breaking up some of the paintwork and getting some different contrasty colours across the wings. So let's have a look at how we did that camouflage and we start off we'll do the tail planes. So we need to mask the airframe to make sure that we don't get any overspray anywhere around this. It was quite easy while we were doing the wings. The uh, limit of the overspray was not that much and it had just been down these parts of the model. So we need to just think about where we're spraying and we're going to do these areas so we need to mask underneath. So let's get on with that and then we'll have a look at how we got these camouflage colours down.
So hopefully the speeded up sections weren't too boring for you. Um, the camouflage pattern is progressing well on our model. There's a lot of work gone into this, it's probably taken about six hours of just spraying to get this done. We've started to break up the base colours with shades of the same colour from different manufacturers. And all in all it's starting to look quite nice. It's just been given a gloss coat. So it just leaves us the tail to do, which is ideal area to demonstrate how we applied that camouflage paint scheme. So let's take a look at how we achieve the camo pattern on our P40. So in the first instance the decal and painting guide from the aftermarket decal sheet has been enlarged to 48 scale. Bit of trial and error downstairs with the printer and we've got that at 48 scale. Then taking a knife we're going to make templates. So we're going to work on this area first which is the dark earth. So we've got a demarcation line there which is the green and we're just going to go to the base of the tailplane and rudder and that's going to be our mask or our template we've got our landmarks so you've got the right up to the rudder there like so now these are just slightly smaller than scale and the reason being for that is when you add the pencil line it's going to make the area a little bit larger and then that will be exact and matching so we're just drawing with a pencil line there so you can see that so this area is green this area is dark earth looking at the paint diagram on the rudder, the dark, the dark green sweeps along here. Like so. So this area here is going to be your dark green and this dark earth from underneath the tailplane just coming up and around that area there. Working on the port side in the same fashion. This time we're going to cut the green out because there's dark earth on each side of the demarcation. Just using the same method. So we're going to work with the dark earth sections first. And we'll just give our extra colour enamel a good waking up and a good stir. So we need to thin this considerably so that it will go through the airbrush and enable a fine demarcation line. So we're going to thin it with lack of thinners just mixing that in the airbrush colour cup not forgetting our dryers to speed the curing time up of these extra colour enamels So we do only need a few drops, there's one, two, three, four. Give it another good stir. And then we're just going to check the airbrush flow, just to make sure we can get a nice easy pattern. Like so. And then it's on to the model. So we're just going to work on this inboard area first. 
So we're just going to start building the colour up, working towards the demarcation line. So we're looking for the contact paint, the contact cone of the paint while we're spraying. You can actually see it going down wet. So we're not crossing that pencil line at any stage. So we've just got an area that's now like that. And then we're going to do that line in. So holding the airbrush 90 degrees to the surface, as close as you can. Steady hand, paint on first just to check your fine line and then it's very slowly trace the line round until the pencil line has disappeared and once that pencil line's disappeared you can then backfill the area to achieve the gloss finish So I'm just coming in now and doing the section of the vertical tail. Like so. Then it's moving on to a different area. So we're going to now do the port side stabilizers so we've got dark earth again just on this part here at the back and exactly the same manner coming in Working in a little area at a time, just building that gloss up and then finishing off with that demarcation line. The tip of the rudder on this side is also darker, so we'll just come in and fill that. and also the outside edge of the tailplane. So again, similar method, just building the colour up until we get close to the demarcation line. cutting in, paint on, I mean the nozzle at this point is no more than a centimetre away from the surface of the plastic, so very low air pressure building that pattern up and then just backfill to make sure it's all even so. so there's no more dark earth sections looking at the paint scheme so I clean the airbrush out and we'll get the green on so we've loaded the colour cup with green and we've mixed it just as we did with the dark earth and we're now going to work on the tailplane again. So we're just going to come in with our dark earth, putting our dark green, sorry, just putting this in. So 
just working back from that little pencil line that we've done and just filling in the area now and then we're just going to blend the heavier application of paint just into the rest of the colour working out towards the end And there's our finished result. So I'll just carry on now and work my way round the rest of the airframe. So we're just going to come up and do this green section. Sometimes it's a little bit awkward to get the right angle. So there we have our tail end they're the basic colors down so that's going to take some time to dry and then we can come in and start distressing that and making it a little bit more interesting such as the with the rest of the airframe such as the wings so we've got a very thin mix of AK real colors RF dark green and we're just going to come in now over our extra color and we're just going to spray totally random patterns just to start breaking up the monotonous green tone of the extra colour paint. Now with the real colour being slightly lighter it does start to add some weathering effects. how well the camera will pick this up because it is ever so slight hopefully you can see the effect taking shape there we're now going to do exactly the same with AK Real Colors Darker and we're just going to start adding some different colors and effects into the paint, into the dark earth paint work this time. Now the AK Real Colour is a really strong, rich shade of dark earth and uh, it doesn't take too much to overdo this so just be easy with it. As you can see there, slowly building up the effect that we're looking for. So after quite a bit of time going around the model, it's now camouflage complete. I've just given this a quick, really wet coat of Mr. Leveling Thinners 
and what that's going to do is any imperfections or slight bruises in the paintwork it's going to react with the surface of the paint again take its time while it's drying and we're going to be ending up with a lovely smooth paint finish ready for the decals. This is now going to be left for at least a couple of days maybe three to fully harden and dry otherwise we run the risk of bruising the top coat and leaving fingerprints in the model as we work with it hence why I've been wearing the glove while I've been handling this. So catch you later and we'll get the decals on. So it's well over a week since I did any work on our P40. I've been doing some building work on another project. So it's extra colour paint is now well and truly dry and it's time to start adding the wash. So as always we're going to be using Flory Models Dark Dirt Wash on this one. You've seen me apply this in pretty much every video build. So the wash has been left for about an hour to dry and we're going to follow the usual removal method so we've got a small piece of kitchen paper slightly moistened with a drop or two of water and then rubbing gently the direction of airflow we're just going to remove the wash from the airframe With it being a gloss surface, most of it's going to come off quite easily. Just rub and make sure that everything is nice and clean. Nothing's run around any of the leading edges. So the wash has now been removed from the airframe and it just leaves a quite a nice contrasting panel line wash that's not too overstated on the dark green and dark earth. I've just quickly added the propeller and the rudder just to give you an overall view of what more or less the finished paint scheme on the airframe is going to look like. We have now painted the area behind the cockpit that just needs a bit of dry brushing just to make it a little bit more interesting and the canopy and the glass work does actually fit quite nicely. So that concludes part three of our Hasegawa stroke reboxing of Hobby 2000's P40 Warhawk. So hopefully you'll join me in part four where we look at getting the model completed, doing some of the smaller metallic work for the exhausts, getting the decals on, final varnish coat and the reveal photos. So until then, everybody please look after yourselves, stay well and take care.